Hi, my name is Maria Bordas, and I work for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. And on that day, 10 years ago, um, I was on the 65th floor of Tower One. I work for the aviation department. And it was a day that will I will probably never forget for a variety of reasons. It was just absolutely gruesome to see uh, the pieces of, of, of airplanes, the body parts um, in a building that was so beautiful because that was the mall at the World Trade Center. Uh, so just a horror and you having to run and, and, and just get out of the way uh, was absolutely, absolutely remarkable. Uh, when I finally made it out of the building, I looked up and I saw some smoke coming out of Tower One and I said, you know what, they could fix that because it's just smoke coming out of Tower One. What happened with the 1993 bombing and how quickly we, we recovered, I knew that they could fix that. So at that moment, I, I felt so hopeful that this was just a small accident. And immediately after that, Tower 2 started to collapse, and immediately after that, Tower 1 came down, and that's when fear just struck. It was a day that I think that I experienced every type of emotion that I know of. Uh, getting in line to catch the ferry that would take me to New Jersey took about eight hours. Um, and once I got into a ferry, um, I don't know if, if you know that, that scene from the Titanic, when the Titanic starts to go down and everyone is in the boats and they're just looking at the Titanic going down. But I, I felt like I was the only person alive that day. And I just felt so lucky to have gotten out. Um, so it was a day that I think that I experienced every range of emotion from ignorance to hope to being so incredibly scared to being just feeling desperately alone and just hoping for the opportunity that I would see my family again. That day um, started out as, as any other day. Um, I had just taken a promotion in, into the World Trade Center. And as a matter of fact, I had just started with the aviation department two weeks before. Um, I, I got in early, I got in around 8.30, and I was um, on the phone um, around 20 to 9 with a friend of mine. Um, her name um, was Debbie Gittleman Kaplan. And we were making lunch plans because it just so happens that the two of us started working together on September 14th, uh, 1981, at the Port Authority, and we both started as management interns. So we were on the phone making plans um, where we were going to go for lunch. And she said, um, let me just call my mom and check on the twins. Um, she had just returned to work and to see how they are and I'll call you back. And well, the world knows what happened about five minutes later, uh, that side of the floor. And we were on the 65th floor on the west side and the floor just shook and then it came back you know the pictures came off the walls I was new in the department I didn't know a lot of people and I heard someone say well it's probably a boiler problem so I said boiler problem there are about three basements here with 65 stories up it can't possibly be a boiler problem this is something severe so at that time 
I, I knew who my staff was, but I'd only been there for two weeks. I said, guys, look, I, I think that we should go down, and if it's nothing, we can always come back. One of the staff members at that time, she just absolutely froze. She, she couldn't move. So a, another staff member and I just took her by the arms and, and, and literally basically carried her downstairs. Um, it was a very orderly type of march because it was it was really a march down the stairs you would you would stop when people from another floor were entering the staircase and 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 you just marched down the stairs um, I think that when we got to like the 35th floor my cell phone worked and I called my husband and I and I knew that he was at a training program and he didn't know what was going on but then um, as I was talking to him, he said um, there was a terrorist attack. And that's when I found out uh, what was happening because up until then, we had, we had no idea. Um, so I said to him, okay, I'll call you back. Let me see if I can get a hold of Christina and Margot just to make sure that they know that I am exiting the building. Well, as luck would have it, I, I was not able to call him back. Um, when we finally reached the second floor, uh, the firemen were starting to come upstairs. And we said, well, what's, what's, what's going on? And they said, well, we think that an airplane clipped the antenna of the World Trade Center. And we all looked at each other and we said, no, I, I don't think that that's, that that's real. Um, but it wasn't until I would say three hours later that I was able to contact my girlfriend and, and have her uh, call the house because Christina, it was, I believe, Christina's first year of college and to get the message out that I was okay. And I said to her, I know you're home and I know that you're recovering from surgery, but you've got to get in your car and you have to go to Union Catholic and you have to tell Margot that her mother is alive. Uh, so would you please do that for me? And, and she did. Uh, and as we ran to Chinatown, and then after that, as we ran to Little Italy, um, hours passed by, but I was able to find out that my husband knew that I had made it out and that my girlfriend Lourdes had gotten Margot from Union Catholic. And wouldn't you know it, Christina set up a telephone station at home because there were so many people calling. She had the house phone, she had her cell phone, um, and it just be she just set up uh, Command Central here here at home. So it was um, it was it was actually um, so rewarding uh, to know that everyone was calling and everyone was worried, and that they were all so happy that I had made it out. I think that one of the biggest concerns that I had that day, since I, I, I knew that my husband uh, knew that I was okay, um, and I knew that Christina was, was at home, um, was that someone got to Union Catholic and told Margot that I had made it out of the building. Um, probably the TVs were going to be on. Uh, they probably would have gathered everyone in, in the gym. Uh, but my biggest concern was just to make sure that somebody got to her and told her that I was okay. I actually knew right away. Um, we would take the bus every day to go to school. And so I would get there around 7.30. And then at Union Catholic, we watched the morning news. It was Channel One. And at that time, this hadn't happened, so it wasn't news yet. We were in first period English class, and the day started like any other day. We said our morning prayers, and as we were settling in and we were opening our laptops, there was an announcement on at the um, there was an announcement on on the loudspeaker, and they just said, "Margo Bordes, please come to the principal's office." And I was a pretty good student. I had never been called to the principal's <laughs> office for any reason, so I said, "That that's weird." know something must have happened because I have no idea what this would be about so I got up and and left the room and when I got to the principal's office 
something about the vibe in the room just told me that something was wrong. It was Sister Persa Lee, which was the principal, and the vice principal, Mr. Marathi, and just the look on their faces, they said, take a seat, and she handed me a box of tissues, and I said, that means someone must have passed away because I, I don't see how something good can come out of this. And in the next room was my mom's best friend, Luli. And once I saw her, I knew it had to be related to my mom because there's no reason that the principal and vice principal and my mother's best friend are all in a room. And the first thing the principal said when I sat down is she said, God called your mom to be all she could be today. And I just started to cry because <laughs> that could mean anything. And I looked at Luli and she said, your mom got out of the building and she's in Chinatown. And I said, what happened? Why did she have to come out of the building? I hadn't heard anything, nothing on the news. We hadn't watched the news. We weren't really listening to the radio. She said her tower was hit by a plane and the towers have collapsed and she ran to Chinatown. And she actually ended the story by saying, and she's having a coffee now in Little Italy. So I laughed and said, is she coming home? Is everything going to be all right? She said, yeah. At that point, she hadn't had any, she didn't have any information that it was, you know, related to a terrorist attack. So the principal, the vice principal said, you know, why don't, why don't you go home? You know, you've, you've been, you've had an emotional morning, just go home. And when I got home, my sister was here manning the phones. All of our family from Florida was calling to make sure that my mom was okay because at that point they had all seen the news. And when I got home, my sister hugged me because the look in her eyes, it just said that she knew something that I didn't. And she goes, do you know what? This is terrorist related, that someone purposely crashed a plane into the World Trade Center. And we just started to cry because at that moment it just, it became so real that my mother just escaped death. And we just cried for a couple of moments. My father came home. And at that point, it was only noon, but I felt as if a whole day had gone by. And um, we didn't see my mother until 10 o'clock that evening. Her commute is an hour and a half, but that day it took her eight hours to get home. And I remember the phone call when she called my dad and said, I, I'm at the train station. I made it. I'm in Westfield. And we all piled in the car and we all drove to Westfield and when my mom got off the train, we hugged her as if we hadn't seen her in years. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> and it was, it was really, it was, we were crying because it was tears of joy. I mean, at that moment, <laughs> At that moment, we were so young. That's right. And all we could think about was, wow, I, I can't believe we almost lost mom today. I mean, imagine getting married and not having our mom at our wedding or having children and not having their grandmother be there. And that was just basically everything that went through our minds that day, that I can't believe she escaped that one, you know? So it was, it was a really emotional experience when, when we saw our mother for the first time after she had, had left the city. And it's really, and it's really funny because when, when you look back and, and, and you see who made it out and who did not make it out, you know, it wasn't because the people that made it out were, were, were scared. It was just a split level decision that said to you, there's something terribly wrong here and I think we need to get out. The friend that I was telling you about, Debbie Gittleman, um, who, who married um, Dave Kaplan, um, she didn't make it out. Um, they were on the 64th floor. Um, they had just installed a new operations center that they could take a look at the Lincoln Tunnel and the Holland Tunnel and the George Washington Bridge and they decided that they were going to go into that